Yes, thank you, Commissioner Brown. Um, my question has to do with some concerns that have come to me from teachers as districts are opening up and releasing their plans. What advice, so I, I understand that Oldham County Schools will be opening on a regular schedule without doing an A, B type schedule. And a teacher contacted me from Oldham County who's gravely concerned that under that scenario, it will be near to impossible from her perspective to be able to implement social distancing in her classroom. Um, what advice do you have for educators who have those concerns and, and to whom should they reach out? Um, and how will KDE address potential situations where schools are not implementing the guidelines since the guidelines are a recommendation and not a requirement? Thank you, Representative. You're correct in that uh, we've worked with public health after hearing from school districts um, to um, provide several options. Uh, obviously, the default option is for uh, to have social distancing in all of our classrooms, hallways, everywhere we have students. The social distancing rule is six feet apart. That can be a square, that can be a radius. Depending on how you calculate it, you can get more or less students in a room. Um, depending on how you calculate that. Um, however, there is an exception in public health and I heard from superintendents and school leaders about how that in, is just not feasible in many areas because when you start applying that six feet social distancing uh, and you start calculating that, you may have normally have 30 kids in a 700 square foot classroom that may get you down to six, seven, or ten or so students. And so the other option is for student, and, and I would say that if students are social distancing, then they can have their masks down if they're not moving. So if they're sitting in a classroom and there's a six feet either radius or square, however you calculate it, they can have their masks lowered while they're receiving instruction. If they're moving around, they need to have their masks on. However, if they're in a classroom and you cannot achieve social distancing, in our guidance, and uh, as confirmed by public health, it says that you can have your you can have a mask on, and uh, that is seen as sufficient protection uh, during a classroom setting, particularly if people, students are not moving around. I understand that that does cause concern. Uh, it is essential that all students, unless there is a medical waiver in effect from their physician, have their mask on in that type of environment. We encourage teachers to uh, have these discussions with their building leaders. Uh, their site-based council and obviously discussions that schools and districts are having with their local health department. You know, there will be situations in hallways when students are moving around despite their best efforts. They're not going to be able to be six feet apart. And we're asking uh, districts to use their best judgment and um, their best efforts to achieve this and to, and to act in good faith. The hybrid model that you speak of or an A and B model would be if a district chooses that they want the benefit of having students six feet apart in a classroom so they can lower their masks uh, during a classroom, then they want to go to that model where you're having student groups come in at various different days of the week to decrease that building um, load or the occupancy of that building and spread it out over a course of days. And so that is an alternative. But it is also permitted to have uh, full uh, classroom uh, attendance as you normally would so long as students have their masks on. And Representative, I don't know that that completely answers your question about the concerns of teachers. I understand that concern. I understand that there are teachers that obviously have underlying health conditions. What we know though from talking with public health is it's essential that everyone, when you wear a mask, you're protecting others. Not, it, it does offer some layer of protection, but the main uh, point of wearing a mask is protecting others, and that's why, and we know that's going to be a huge lift for, for us to enforce in schools, uh, but it's essential that we all model this and that we uh, attempt to do this as a state to mitigate that risk. Um, thank you. May I ask one more quick question? Thank you. Okay, so this is on a different topic. Um, CDC guidelines recommend that classroom doors and windows are open to allow air circulation um, in, in light of COVID-19, but Senate Bill 1 requires doors to be closed and locked. Um, in a situation like my classroom, I'm on a second floor, I don't have windows, and we have multiple teachers sharing a special education room. Um, which, which of those guidelines would take precedence? Um, is there going to be any flexibility about the doors being locked? 
in light of COVID-19 and what data may be used to make that decision. Thank you, Representative uh, Bojanowski, for that question. Very good question. Uh, this is an example of how you know we're having some conflicting rules and in, in between governmental entities and agencies. Uh, this has been discussed uh, with the Kentucky Center for School Safety, uh, as well as Marsha Wilcox, and with Public Health. I don't. I think a compromise has been reached on that, and that is either in our KDE guidance, in one of our guidance documents, or will be in our guidance. And I, it's my understanding, and KDE staff can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I believe that that can be relaxed in order to provide that ventilation if needed um, at, on the, in the, at the classroom level. We'll definitely get a confirmation for you on that. I know that has been discussed between the two agencies. There are various uh, issues like that that, uh, that we're uh, relying on the Kentucky Center for School Safety and Marsha Wilcox to advise districts on, you know, in a normal year, how you uh, have cars go in and out of the, the parking lot, for example, or where there may be uh, uh, congregation points. We know that this year there may meet, need to be a rethinking of all of that. And so uh, there is a guidance document out there about those types of logistics um, that school districts can rely on.